Well, good evening, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Man, I am back from celebrating my 20th anniversary, and man, out of the frying pan and into the fire with the Cowboys, something that I kind of anticipated. I thought for sure that Dan Quinn was going to get hired this cycle. I mean, he did take seven, and I mean seven, different uh, interviews. I thought for sure, though, it was going to be the Seattle Seahawks, not the Washington Commanders. That one's going to be interesting. So the question now is, you know, Dan Quinn, he is now dead to me. He is no longer the coach of the Dallas Cowboys defense. The question now is, What's going to happen with the Cowboys? We hear Ron Rivera is coming in. Ron Rivera um, was a respected coach with the Carolina Panthers, although he had a great quarterback in Cam Newton. Um, their defenses were always really good. I mean, you think of how Luke uh, Ketch Ketch Ketchley, I can't pronounce his name right, um, was really good. Maybe this will mean that the Cowboys will have an emphasis on linebackers since we kind of say they're kind of passe. But the thing I'm wondering here is, and again, this is just the first name that we've heard. Um, Jane Slater went on 105 The Fan with her um, possible candidates list. So we're going to listen to that in just a second. But I'm thinking about Ron Rivera. If you're bringing in Ron Rivera, I think that his defense, here's the problem. The Cowboys have brought in like they brought in Mike McCarthy, and they basically hired all the other coaches. You know, there's the famous Bill Parcells, if you want me to cook, then at least let me buy the groceries. Yeah, I agree with you on that one because there's a difference in, you know, if you're using spices that are old as shit, Versus fresh ones, telling you, telling you, fresh rosemary is a lot different than a bottle that's been in the cabinet for about three years. It just is. So if you bring in Ron Rivera, what system are you going to run? Ron Rivera is more of that old guy, kind of bend, don't break, not as aggressive, say, as Dan Quinn, which is predicated on pressing the receivers, and getting upfield. So now, do you clean house with your defensive staff and start all over with Ron Rivera, who he wants to bring in? Or do you make Ron Rivera coach guys that may not be coaching the way that you want to? This is a case of the Dallas Cowboys' complete dysfunction. The complete dysfunction, because the reality is, is, you know, you sat back and you waited and you waited and you waited for Dan Quinn to decide what he was going to do instead of saying, OK, let's get a plan B going right now. I don't know. I don't know. This is where another case of everybody else has kind of filled out their rosters. It's, I mean, you know, with coaches, except for the Cowboys and the Commanders. And this, again, is another one of those reasons why you look at the Cowboys and you got to keep the pressure up on. <sighs> keep the pressure on Steven and Jerry Jones. A lot of the problems we have are their making. So let's listen to Jane Slater. I have no idea who she's looking at as possible candidates. Um, you know, we believe Al Harris, who's a young guy who would be able to keep the same system but would have, you know, a, a new coach's, um, you know, problems. and stuff. It's basically be a rookie defensive coordinator. So there's going to be a learning curve there. But at least you'd keep the players happy and you keep the same kind of system. Um, I don't know if Mike Vrabel would be interested in doing this. Another one of the problems that you have presented here, too, is, again, of Jerry Jones's making, is you don't know what's going to happen in a year, there's no stability here. Mike McCarthy is on a one-year deal. Mike McCarthy is on a one-year deal. You probably, knowing Jerry, they probably won't extend Dak Prescott for the drama portion up there. So you look at this and say, I can come in, but it may be only for one year, and it may be that I end up messing up my name and reputation. So, again, another one of those crazy scenarios. Let's listen to what Jane Slater has to say on 105 The Fan. With G -bag crazy day. I know it is crazy. I mean, sort of expected, right? Uh, if anything, I feel like Dan Quinn probably should have left last year because uh, I don't think that that Green Bay game did him, did him any favors. But I wish him all the success. And 
I know how well respected he was in that locker room and how much some of the guys liked him. And I've, I've made the argument that I don't know what other defensive coordinators in his rookie season would have listened to Micah Parsons saying, mm-hmm. hey, let me rush the edge while also uh, playing linebacker because that's how he was drafted. A lot of times you're only seen how you come in. And so credit to Dan Quinn for, you know, being open to letting his players prove themselves. And to Micah's credit, I think he's done a good job showing some position flex there. So what are you hearing in terms of where the Cowboys go next to fill mm-hmm. Dan Quinn's shoes? I think it's a little bit of a complicated uh, move here if you think about it. The fact that they didn't ex- extend Mike McCarthy, uh, I think, makes it tricky to go out and make a big splash at defensive coordinator. I mean, he's going to come here when you don't know the future of this franchise past this season. Hmm. Uh, so I, I think that that's going to be a consideration. I think most people that come to these jobs, they, you know, I was talking to another coach about this this morning, they ultimately want at least two, three years of security. Now, you know, an older coach, like say a Ron Rivera, or, you know, I've, I've seen the Mike Zimmer uh, thing tossed around. I haven't talked to them, right? I can't confirm any of that. Okay. Uh, they might be more apt to rolling the dice, as one coach told me, you know, they're more confident in themselves. They might be more interested in, and coming in here and doing a one-year deal. What I do know is, you know, this organization isn't a big fan of hiring people and and paying out contracts for Mm -hmm. guys to sit around and do nothing. And so I I think that's where we we find this situation. And then I think the next thing is for coaches with one year left on their deal, they don't have to ask permission to go to another team if they're getting a promotion. So how many coaches on the staff, offensive and defense, are going to look to move over to Dan Quinn, who is going to be putting together a staff of his own Mm -hmm. with kind of late in the game with not a lot of people out there. So I think that's going to be something to watch here in the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Jane, uh, you mentioned about the the Mike Zimmers and other – I know for a fact that Mike – and I know you'll get the information too. I I know Mike will absolutely do this. He would take this job here. If all well, I would trust you on that. Obviously, you yeah. have a, a good Mike relationship Zimmer, okay. with them. I do, and I know, I, and he's going to tell you the exact same thing. I know, uh, some or some way you'll back channel whatever you have to do. I know you'll get that done. But uh, yeah, I, I, I think to me this is where this is where uh, to me the, you, you know the familiarity with Jerry and Steven. Now the respect. I mean, let's see what Mike McCarthy. What is his? You know, is his, was his memories of battling against a guy like Mike Zimmer? Uh, you know, at Minnesota Green Bay, was that something that he's like, man, this guy gave me fits, or was there? You know, I know that I know that uh, Mike Zimmer was very complimentary of Mike when he got let go in Green Bay. He was like, hey, th- this is a terrible day. This guy's a damn good coach, that kind of thing. So, you know, to me, that that if it's not in house, that just seems like a pretty good option to kind of keep things going. Mm-hmm. At least the Joneses has some fam- familiarity there. Well, and honestly, Brian, I, I think for any coach, and this is not just, I'd be happier uh, with Mike Zimmer to Mike McCarthy than I think when you're heading into final year without an extension, uh, you are sort of heading into a lame duck season. There would be paranoia for any coach to bring in a young DC or, you know, I've seen people absurdly say, well, what about Mike Vrabel or Bill Belichick? That would breed even more paranoia around mm-hmm. here. Dan Quinn came in here after that one season with Mike Nolan and I thought he worked really, really well alongside Mike. I mean, those two were boxing in the off season. I think it allowed Mike to focus a little bit more on the offense than he was able to do when, you know, they were going through the COVID year and, and the challenges when Mike Nolan was here. And to be very clear, I'm not sitting here trashing Mike Nolan. That was a tough year uh, for a lot of people. But but he wasn't I good, Jane. It, <laughs> yeah. it wasn't good. He wasn't. Yeah, and, and, and I mean, your report and the, the but, the prob- was, but the yeah. problem with all of that, Ryan, was they were trying to change the scheme yeah. in a COVID year right. over over Zoom calls. And so I thought it was right. a little too ambitious that year. And it, it that was the only coach, I'm if I remember, that the Cowboys have actually said goodbye to after just one year. You know, normally, right. mm-hmm. Jerry will write, will write it out with these guys no matter what the fans Zimmer say. was done. So I, I think what you've got here is you've got a unique situation of having to bring in someone here that has familiarity with the league but also is going to be able to work alongside Mike McCarthy and not threaten what Mike is trying to do here in Dallas. I mean, Mike wants an extension, right? So he wants this, you know, to be a good year not only for himself but for – you know, Dak Prescott, but I also think there's a lot of 
a lot of things going on on the defensive side of the ball again. And, you know, some of the things that I've heard is that there's been a real lack of defensive leadership in there. Sure. I think having Dan Quinn as the defensive coordinator helped with some of that. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you get a guy from the outside, how is he going to handle and start building up the leadership on that side of the ball that has been lacking uh, in some of my conversations with players? Well, Jane, if you're saying things yeah. about this team and the locker room and all that, you're absolutely the best at this with this football team. And everything you said about Mike Nolan and all that, you took a lot of crap at. I'll tell you what, you did a hell of a job. You were absolutely right with all that. And that's why we should always listen to you. I, if you're if you're, if you're you're Mike McCarthy, though, do you, do you have any grounds to go in there and knowing that you're a lame duck and try and say, listen, if you guys are going to make me this way <laughs> – I'm gonna give me some, give me some help. Give me some players. Give, give me that. Give me, you know. Do you start making demands if you're Mike McCarthy, knowing that uh, this could be your last campaign? You know, I it's you would think, uh, but you know, I guess you could also argue that last year, you know, Jerry and company gave him the play calling duties, and you know, we've seen in years past they've sort of made concessions uh, with Mike McCarthy. It, it does very much feel like this is a prove-it year for Mike. And, you know, even internally, let's, you know, talking to some people in there without getting into who I talked to, it's, you know, all of them are talking about the fact, you know, here goes another year where all season long people are going to be comparing Mike McCarthy to what's out there. The fact that Bill Belichick wasn't hired this cycle, mm -hmm. the fact that Mike Vrabel wasn't hired this cycle. So it's not a, it's not a great place to be, and I certainly wouldn't want it if I had one year left with NFL Network and I kept thinking about, you know, somebody coming in here to replace me. Contract years are tough. I'm in one yeah. myself. Yep. Uh, and so I do feel for, you know, Mike McCarthy, and to use Jerry Jones's uh, phrase, you know, smallest violin in the room. He's still a head coach in a football league, coaching yeah. for the Dallas Cowboys. But I, I do think that it, it makes a lot of this, there's layers to this, and I think it, it, it makes it, you know, tricky for them. And, again, they're looking for a defensive coordinator fairly late in the game. I mean, right. you've got all these coaches that have been hired and they're already pulling a lot of guys that are that you don't have to ask permission for that are, you know, they're promoting and they're not lateral moves. And so I, I think that's the real challenge here. And then I think everyone just assumes that Joe Witt or Al Harris are going to stay here. Right. He's not the same man that can bring them Joe. with them and right. give <laughs> them, you know, a better title. Yeah. Jane, last one. Uh, I know you're super busy. I appreciate you giving us some time, but what did you make of Jerry's all-in comments at the Senior Bowl? I guess I, you know, he said that should answer a lot of questions. My only takeaway from that was I still have a lot more questions. I mean, how are you going to go all-in when you've got a coach heading into a lame duck field? season? You just lost Dan Quinn that, you know, people can say what they want to say about that Green Bay game, but remember at the beginning of the year when the offense wasn't doing their part, it was this defense that was bailing them out. And it's crazy that people keep forgetting that. And I'm not sitting here working as a PR tool for Dan Quinn. I'm just saying there's been some revisionist history as we talk about this last season. And mm -hmm. so those are the challenges. And you've also got, what, 16 free agents you've got to figure out. And then you've also got guys that are coming up and want to negotiate their contracts. You've got to figure out what you're going to do with Dak Prescott's deal because we've talked about him having a no franchise, no trade. And they're yeah. on the hook for 59.5 if they don't extend them. And so. I am going to leave it right there. But basically, the Cowboys, again, they make it so hard on themselves. You know, they make it so hard on themselves. You say, we're going all in, and here it is. The Super Bowl is a week away. Everybody's already hired their, their, their head coaches and pretty much gotten their staffs together. There's not a lot of choices out there if you're looking at, you know, bringing in somebody that's going to be innovative and everything else. Maybe Mike Zimmer comes in and so on. And, you know, he's basically, this is what we do in free agency. We don't do anything the first couple of weeks. We wait till the dust clears or we wait till training camp to try and sign guys or try and make some moves during the season when there's not much to pick from this is where the joneses have screwed the cowboys again you don't have stability nobody knows how long mike mccarthy is going to be here you know you're not going to take a job with a company that's about to go bankrupt you're kind of like i don't know how long they're going to be in business i need to wait for something that has a little stability <sighs> All right, good people.
it's hard to continue to believe. I want to believe. I want to. 